Hi everyone! Today, I will be presenting the cell membrane bubble experiment and the different cell concepts. Before we start, here are the materials you will need. Straws, a tray with bubble solution, and some thread. So let's start! As we all know, the cell membrane is composed of a phospholipid bilayer. As you can see here, the bubble film is not rigid, so it moves smoothly and does not break even if you bounce it up and down. This is a good representation of how phospholipid bilayer behaves, which leads us to the conclusion number one that membranes are fluid and flexible. Next, with some bubble solution on my hand, you can see that the bubble film does not pop even after I pass my hand through the film, and as I remove my hand, the bubble film repairs itself. Similar to cell membranes, since the phospholipids are very attracted to one another, it leads us to conclusion number two, that membranes are capable of self-repair. Okay, next I first blow a bubble and then create another bubble inside the first one. Notice how it is very similar to the compartmentalized structure of eukaryotic cells. This brings us to the conclusion number three, that eukaryotic cells feature membrane-bound organelles and that both membranes are composed of a phospholipid bilayer. This time, as I put a loop of thread onto the bubble film and pop the film inside, nothing on the outside breaks. And using my finger to move it around, you can see that the loop drifts on the bubble film without making it pop. In cell membranes, membrane proteins can also move across the phospholipid bilayer, which leads us to conclusion number 4, that membrane proteins perform special functions. Moving on, I first create a bubble, then as I slowly pull out, you can see the small tunnel of bubbles forming at the edge of the straw, which is similar to gap junctions. So just like in animal cells, these gap junctions help in transferring molecules between adjacent cells, therefore leading us to conclusion number 5, that gap junctions aid transport between animal cells. Lastly, I will be blowing a big bubble. Grabbing a thread, I put it underneath the bubble, and as I lift it, it forms some sort of cleavage and then splits into two. This shows how binary fission works and leads us to our last and final conclusion that many bacteria cells reproduce through binary fission.